Hello friends. Today we'll be discussing neutralizations and uh, there's a lot of information in the PowerPoint so you're going to want to make sure that you um, pause it when you need to so you can uh, write down all the things, especially the equation which has lots of variables and words. Anywho, uh, let's begin. Um, so a neutralization um, happens uh, when a strong acid and a strong base react. When they do that, um, they get, they sort of effectively cancel each other out and they make um, a salt water solution. And it ends up being a regular double replacement reaction, which we already know how to do, but might be hard for some people to remember them. We're not going to write them too much, but just so you know, that's what's happening when you have an acid react with a base, strong acid, strong base, which we call neutralization. Here's an example. Um, you've got the strong base of potassium hydroxide, the strong acid of nitric acid, and they make a salt. So this is like what the salt part is. Uh, this is called potassium nitrate. So it's not always like NaCl. This is classified as a salt compound. And they also make water um, as the part of the other product. So every strong acid, strong base reaction will make something like this and then water. Um, and in this case, all one-to-one -one reaction, as you can see. Here's another example where you've got calcium hydroxide, strong base, and then hydrochloric acid, strong acid, and it makes calcium chloride. That's the salt. Remember the, and, oh, hang on. And then the, uh, you also make water, in this case, H2O. Now, you might remember when you do a neutralization or double replacement reaction, the outsides go together, so you got Ca and Cl. And when you crisscross them, you get this, and then you've got the H and the O, and then they cancel each other out to make water. So that's a common neutralization reaction. Um, you can have some, hey, you might be surprised. There's some math that goes along with them. Uh, looks at the amount of acid required to neutralize, neutralize the amount of base. Uh, and in chemistry, we call those neutralizations when we control them very, very tightly. We call them a titration, but we won't be doing any titrations um, because of, you know, the global pandemic. So rip titrations. So um, sample neutralization problems set up like this. There's a lot of things to look at, so please be chill about it. Uh, if 115 milliliters of 0.76 molar sulfuric acid reacts with 0.318 molar solution of sodium hydroxide, what volume will be needed of sodium hydroxide? <laughs> oh man, this is worded terribly. What volume will you need of sodium hydroxide to neutralize the H2SO4? So uh, when you do a neutralization reaction, you need to have a bunch of things, including the balance reaction. So uh, here's the balance reaction for that one. I think this is in the previous, no, it's a different one. So on this one, you've got uh, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, sodium hydroxide, and when you crisscross them, again, the outsides go together, right? So you get HOH, that's the water, and then the insides go together, sodium and sulfate. Sodium is plus one, sulfate's minus two, so when you crisscross them, you end up with that. So you'll need this balance reaction for the setup of the problem, and to do that, you use the neutralization equation. So the neutralization equation has, um, lots of variables, the N number of moles of acid and number of moles of base, they come from the balanced reaction. So that's why you need the balanced reaction. And then the M, capital M's and V's, they come from the problem, the way that it's worded and written out. So number of moles of acid, this molar coefficient of acid, that's really just the number of moles from the balanced reaction. Same with the base, number of molar coefficient from the base, again, from the balanced reaction. Uh, the molarity of the acid in the problem. Uh, the molarity of the base, of course, the volume of the acid, the volume of the base. This might, you might remember this as um, the dilution equation, M1V1 equals M2V2. Same idea, um, it's just that we have acids and bases. Now notice for these that the number of moles of acid um, goes on the, the side of the bases, molarity and volume of base, and number of moles of base right there goes on the side for molarity and volume of acid. It's a little confusing. Uh, make sure you write all those down so you know how to do them. So in this problem, we'll go back to the one that we just had in the previous sl two slides ago. Um, this is how where all the numbers would come from. You'd use the equation for neutralizations and setting it up, you'd have uh, the number of moles of acid from the balanced reaction. Well, there's a one in front of the acid, so that's a one goes there. And then number of moles of base, and sorry, molarity and volume of base. Well, from the problem, the molarity of the base is 0 0.318, so that goes there. We're solving for volume of base, volume of NaOH, so we're looking for that one. And then number of moles of base here. So you look at the base and say, oh, there's a two in front of the base. 
Um, so that's going to go down here. I know it's a base because it has the OH in it. And then uh, the acid numbers from the problem, it's 115 milliliters. That's the volume of the acid. And it's 0.76 molar. That's the molarity of the acid. So that's how all of the numbers fit in. And this is not a hard problem to solve. You saw problems like this many times before. Uh, just rearrange, divide both sides at 0.318. And you'll get the answer for volume of base. In this case, it equals about 550 milliliters of base. So an easy, um, not an easy, not uh, sorry, not an, not a hard equation to solve. I mean, the math is a bit hard. It's just a matter of making sure to put all the numbers in the right spots. And in the next video, we will uh, do a bunch of problems so you can understand how to not only write the balanced reactions but also uh, set them up so you can use the neutralization equation correctly. Okay, bye-bye.